Everybody ready? Yeah. You guys ready? Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. Today is um, Thursday, May 25th. This is a regular, uh, this is a regular board meeting of the Olentangy uh, Local Schools Board of Education. We are actually in the Olentangy Orange High School Theater today instead of uh, the administration building because we've got um, a nice agenda with the spring student and staff recognition items. So um, I will call the meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Mr. Lester? Here. Dr. Dabrico? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Dr. Wise? Here. Dr. Wallach? Here. All right, would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'll now um, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written. Have a motion, please. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, please call the roll. Dr. Dabrico. Yes. Mr. Lester. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Dr. Wise. Yes. Dr. Wallach. Yes. All right, we're going to roll into the president's report and then get to the um, discussion. I'm so um, this evening. Uh, is the last uh, meeting for Mr. Rafe as our superintendent. As we we announced, and I believe it was back in January, and we went through a whole search process, announced uh, Mr. Rafe's successor. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Rafe for his contributions to Olentangy over the past eight years uh, as superintendent. For me, like many others, it, it was with mixed emotions that we accepted his decision to retire this year. While we are happy for Mr. Rafe and his family, to see his career uh, at Olentangy finish on a high note. Uh, we just came from graduation last Sunday, so it's always nice to come off of graduation and have a meeting. Uh, Mr. Rafe will be missed by many. Well, I do think it's important to recognize the things that Mr. Rafe was able to accomplish. I think we have many of them up on the slide. Um, you know, th th there were many. You know, I was, I had the good fortune of being on the board in 2015 when Mr. Rafe was selected superintendent I think if you asked me or Mr. Rafe then, could you imagine the things you would go through in the next eight years as superintendent <laughs> in the challenges you faced, in the obstacles you overcame? Um, there's no way you could have predicted you know, what we went through and what you went through as our leader, what we went through as a board. Um, and you went through it you know, with, uh, with strong leadership and with excellence. And so for that, we're very thankful. Um, it's equally important to acknowledge and admire the manner in which Mark went about achieving those accomplishments. Mr. Rafe always approached his job with the best interest of the district and community in mind. And he could always clearly articulate his vision for the district. Mark never shied away from difficult issues, and there were many, right? Um, and while we always didn't agree on the issues, we always had a healthy level of respect for each other's opinions. And at the end of the day, you can't ask for anything more than that between a board member and the superintendent. So for that, I will always be grateful, and I wish you the best wishes, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, you want to go right to left? Dr. <laughs> Wallach, do you want to start? Sure. Mr. Ray's retirement marks the end of an era, one characterized by commitment, tireless effort, and unwavering dedication to our students and their future. Three years marks Leonard School District with passion, vision, and an unyielding belief in the power of public education. Under Mark's guidance, Olentangy Local Schools have achieved unprecedented growth and success. We have witnessed remarkable advancements in academic excellence, innovation, community partnerships, and the overall enrichment of our students' lives. Mr. Rafe has been a true champion of our students. He's fostered an environment that celebrates diversity and nurtures the unique talents and potential of every child, truly working to facilitate maximum learning for every student. I'm just sorry that our time working together wasn't longer. Mm -hmm. You may not feel the same. I do. I do. <laughs> now, as you embark on this next chapter in your life, 
I want to express my deepest gratitude for the immeasurable contributions that you've made to our district. Uh, I met you years before we actually moved to the district, and I was so impressed with Olentangy, I knew it was the premier district in the state of Ohio, and it was where we wanted to raise our daughters so they too could flourish here. Your legacy will forever be etched in the halls of our schools, or at the very least spray painted on the walls, <laughs> and in the hearts of those you've impacted. <laughs> Wishing you and Katie all the best. You will be missed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> well, I first met Mr. Rafe when I was uh, running for school board, uh, and I uh, asked for a meeting so I you know, see the person I might potentially be working with. And I've told a few people this. I got the look from him like I was there to you know, try and date his daughter. He's you know, <laughs> sort of up and down trying to make sure that I was, uh, that I was the right person. And to me, it's because he, he very much cares about this district. Um, that care has been evident in everything that he has done. Um, and it is, uh, he said to me many, many times as we've, as we've gone through this, students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, that care has just radiated out in everything I've seen and it, it's uh, something that has inspired the staff um, and the teachers and, and, and all the people that are working in the district. Um, it is part of creating this environment uh, where we are so fortunate to have our, our children where the community is so fortunate to have their children. Uh, that doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't just happen naturally. It happens through a leader who is committed to making sure that we are taking care of everyone. Um, so for that, I, I am deeply grateful. I've uh, had a such a wonderful experience working with you. Thank you. Uh, I too you know, wish uh, that, that we had more time, uh, but I wish you all the best in retirement and just thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for caring. I appreciate it. Thank you. Twice. Well. <laughs> The first time I met Mr. Waite was actually December 14, 2016. Coffee chat at your house. Coffee chat at my house. Yes. Um, I was asked to host that coffee chat, and actually I thought it was a hoax when I got the email. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we had just moved to the district in July. And so we knew just a little people, and that little people actually came to the coffee chat. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Mr. Rafe, he came, he talked about the district, he answered our questions which we confirmed why moving my family to Olentangy was the best de decision for our family. Um, who knew mm -hmm. that I would end up being your boss? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so when my turn thank began, Mindy for that. <laughs> yes, thank you Mindy for that. Um, but when my turn began, it was a joke. <laughs> Not the term, sorry, but the joke was, I brought the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, however, of course, we know that I didn't, but that was a uh, rough two years, a rough two years for our district, and um, there was a lot of conversation that Mr. Rafe and I had um, in what was going on. We had the pandemic, we had the George Floyd, you know, uh, death where we heard from our students, and so being able to share with Mr. Rafe um, the thoughts and the emotions and feelings that I was feeling and also just kind of from, you know, the black community, everything at Omen Tangi. Um, it meant a lot for him to have that listening ear. Um, he possessed the qualities of a great superintendent, ensuring that we are aligned with the district mission and goals. Um, the greatest quality I can say is, and that I've witnessed, is the care for students. Um, I think of when, um, he actually butt dialed me. <laughs> and I called back <laughs> because it was a weekend of either it was homecoming or prom. I can't remember what it was. Um, but I was on pins and needles and so were you because the fear of if something happens to one of our kids right. during that weekend. And so it was just reassuring like, oh, you're feeling the same way that I'm feeling every time we have a homecoming, mm -hmm. every time we have a prom. Um, we want our kids to have fun and we don't want any tragedies. Mm. Um, I'm so glad that this board um, does not have a dysfunctional partnership with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so very proud of that. Um, I was able to share my perspective regarding issues and actions with ease. And Mr. Rafe, thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and moving our district forward. Thank you. You will be okay. missed. All right, bring us home, Dr. Capricorn. That's a lot of pressure. Oh, Can I just throw a ditto in there? <laughs> <laughs> so, These guys, well, they want to go. They got grad parties to go to. <laughs> so I think the quality of any work relationship is the 
ability and the climate you have it, to disagree. And um, the myth is that we always agree on everything, and we didn't, and we pushed back, and we pushed back hard, and um, we had long conversations, and it made me better. It, we didn't always agree, but we always respected each other, and I appreciate that very much. Um, taking the time to explain things, taking time to listen, and that's a big deal because in our climate, in our planet, it's my way or the highway, and it never was that way. So I, I'm very appreciative of that. Number two, um, you are a superintendent for all of the kids in our district, and that's a big deal because as we walked through, as we went through graduation last week, every kid was different. Their shoes were different. Their hair was, everything about them was different. But you were a superintendent for every single kid working to make sure every kid felt welcome. And um, especially my two kids, Noah and Leah, um, you were a superintendent for them. And it's a big deal. I don't think they'll ever remember what you did, but they just remember how they felt in your schools, which was a big deal. And the last thing I'm going to comment, which was awesome for me, is you were never satisfied with awesomeness with, with what our kids did. You were always thinking about how to get better. With the first time we talked about the academic achievement of our kids, there was no victory lap. There was no, how about that? It was, well, we've got to get better in this area. We've got to get better. So those are the things I'll remember. I'm glad you can enjoy every second of your retirement because you deserve it. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. I am um, very appreciative of all those kind words. Um, you know, I jokingly say sometimes these guys, as my bosses, throw around compliments like uh, manhole covers. <laughs> I mean, if you had been this nice before, I might have stayed. <laughs> That's typical at these kind of ceremonies, right? But wait, there's more. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, no. So, do you hope you're paying attention, Mr. Meyer? <laughs> <laughs> and so you know that I'm a big script person, and this is you me. Are script? I, I'm riffing, <laughs> as you taught me to do. <laughs> so I am here on behalf of not only our district leadership team, who we have all been with you for eight years, but also all of our staff. Um, and so I have here your district um, retirement clock and years of service <laughs> Wow, thank I know you so much. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> but <laughs> what I want to say, first of all, the board has encapsulated so many great um, aspects of your leadership over the last eight years, but um, what I want to kind of try to capture is what I know to be Olin TNG. Um, I've, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I taught in the district um, from 1990 to 2001, and then I came back in 2015 to be with Mr. Ray from the leadership team. And my kids graduated a long time ago from OHS, so I've been around since we were one building. And what I've always loved about Olin TNG is the care for students that is unparalleled. And you exemplify that, and you have carried that on through tens of thousands of students added to our, our district. And um, I, I think what I wish everyone could see is every kid you know, every teacher, every custodian, every food service worker, every bus driver that you take the time to talk to and get to know personally about themselves, their family, what's important to them, um, makes what happens here special. And so thank you. I can only just say thank you for I, that. I appreciate you setting up the student award press yes. ceremony to, so we had an audience for all this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how people. else we were going to get people here on the last three day of school. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. All right. So now we go to the highlight of tonight's meeting, the um, Board of <laughs> Education Spring Student Staff Recognition. So I'll, I will turn the, the uh, microphone over to uh, Mr. Lester, who will walk us through um, the uh, presentation. 
Yeah, the board members want to go sit. All right. Uh, we on? Okay. Uh, so tonight's meeting is a special one for us uh, because it's the. We on? We good? Uh, tonight's meeting is a special one for us because it's the evening that we as a board get to recognize uh, the students and staff members for their outstanding achievements in co curricular, extracurricular, and athletic events that occurred this spring. Uh, we are excited to celebrate some of our students, coaches, and advisors on their outstanding achievements. As I announce your name, please walk to the stage to receive your award uh, and have your photo taken with Board President Kevin O'Brien and Superintendent Mark Rafe. This is going to be a special limited edition. It's the last version of it, so this will be worth money someday. Uh, these will be mailed to your home in a few weeks. Uh, if you want to come down and take a picture, you, you, you don't hesitate. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Russell. No problem. Uh, performing, so we'll start with the performing arts. We're going to kick off as we acknowledge those students and groups achieving state honors in the performing arts, band, orchestra, choir, and drama. From Olentangy Berlin High School, Drew Steiber, 2023 International Thespian Society National Thespian Award. From Olentangy High School, Kishav Sriram, 2023 OMEA All-State Orchestra. Uh, from Ontangi Orange High School, and I understand that this uh, individual is leaving us, unfortunately, at the end of the year, uh, but just want to thank him so much for all of the, the effort he gave to the Orange Band program. Uh, it's truly an outstanding uh, uh, ensemble there and groups. Uh, Dr. Ishba Cox, Director of Bands, uh, and they received a 20, 2023 Superior Rating at the OMEA State Band Contest with the High School Wind Ensemble. Uh, in the visual arts, from Olentangy Liberty High School, Kate Crowell, 2023 Top 300 Artwork in the State of Ohio, Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibition. And Catherine Turner, 2023 Top 300 Artwork in the State of Ohio, Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibition. Uh, Olentangy schools have a flourishing DECA program at all four high schools. DECA prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs for careers in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management at high schools and colleges throughout the globe. Uh, the following students receive state and international honors. From Olentangy Berlin High School, Lila Barnhart, 2023 DECA State Finalist, Community Given. Britton Bonomo, 2023 DECA State Finalist, Community Giving. Audrey Butcher, 2023 Fifth Place DECA State's Community Awareness. Marin Curry, 2023 Second Place DECA State's an ICDC Qualifier in the category Apparel and Accessories. Precious Okorafor, second place in the 2023 DECA State Finals and ICDC Qualifier in Entrepreneurship. <laughs> Livy Reed, 2023 DECA State Finalist in Community Giving. Sahar Sriram, 2023 third place DECA States and ICDC Qualifier in the category Business Growth Plan. Maggie Van Horn, fifth place at DECA States in Community Awareness. <laughs> the following journalism students received honors from the 2023 Ohio Scholastic Media Association. From Olentangy Orange High School and earning the 2023 Ohio Scholastic Media Association State Yearbook Contest Superior Rating and first place in the state for the bronze bayonet are the following. Sophia Bobe.
Arian Bombana. Grace Bozick. Claire Housie. Avery Hike. Rachel Lehman. Molly Shannon. Taylor Stewart. Sierra Toot. And from Owen Tangy Berlin High School, Ashley Mallon, Superior Rating Magazine Cover Layout. Uh, for athletics, we now turn to, our, to recognizing our phenomenal student athletes and their coaches. Many have received individual state-level honors in their sport this year. The board congratulates the following. From Olentangy Berlin High School, Jim Cornette, 2023 Coach of the Year Boys Volleyball. From Orange High School, Alicia Coleman, 2023 Fourth Place State Tournament Girls Wrestling All-State. Okay. Uh, Cassidy Guerin, Fifth Place State Tournament Girls Wrestling All-State. Raya Mahmood, 8th place State Girls Wrestling Tournament All-State. Talia Mitchell, All-State 5th place State Girls Wrestling Tournament. And Coach Vanessa Oswalt, 2023 Ohio Coach of the Year Girls Wrestling. And finally, for academics, from Olentangy Academy, the following students participated and placed at the 2023 Ohio State Science Fair. Bala Ilandala, State Science Fair Superior Rating. And Grace Wen, State Science Fair Excellent Rating. On behalf of the entire board, I would once again like to thank and congratulate the many outstanding students, coaches, and advisors recognized this evening. We are so proud of your accomplishments. Good job. All right, so while, while the board comes back to the table, I will remind everyone, you are welcome to stay, but we understand if you choose uh, to leave. You're already moving. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Maybe before. laughs>
it out like we're going to pass the hat for collection. Right. Right? There's plenty of seats up front. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So uh, our next agenda item is the uh, superintendent's report. Uh, All righty, Mr. Ray. We'll get right to it then. Always great to have the kids here. Um, thank you. All of our association leadership is present, so it's nice to have them here and members of our uh, administrative team and all our guests still here. So uh, obviously, we spent a long time at the Johnson Center on Sunday. Graduated 1,800. And 34 seniors, OHS had 435, LHS 488, Orange 524, and Berlin High School 387. So congratulations to all of our graduates and their families. Um, you know, obviously, the closing of the school year brings a lot of celebrations all throughout the district. So we have a Berkshire Middle School held their 8th grade awards. It's clap out yesterday. Liberty Middle 8th grade award, award event was this morning. And then... See a picture of Cheshire that held a school-wide assembly in the fifth grade graduation. I was out and about in a bunch of buildings all week, so I got to see a bunch of those ceremonies, which was just <coughs> excuse me, a great time celebrating our, um, our students and their families. So congratulations to all the fifth graders and eighth graders who will be transitioning to new schools next year. Um, May is Better Speech and he Hearing and Speech Month. So uh, we had an opportunity to raise awareness about uh, communication disorders and the role of our speech language pathologists. So we have 36 uh, SLPs in our district. They support more than 1,600 students. So congratulations to them. They're very, very good, um, hardworking, hardworking people there. Uh, 75 middle school students from Berkshire, Hyatt's, and Shanahan uh, competed in the books competition this week. So you see a. Uh, it was a Shanahan Middle School student who became experts on 20 different books covering a range of genres and topics and represented their schools in a quiz uh, team style competition. So congratulations to all of those students who participated in that uh, Olentangy Battle of Books. Um, we had uh, Indian Springs Elementary students celebrated Math Week, May 1st through the 5th. You see there. Uh, that is the ST Math Penguin GG. You guys just recently approved a purchase for a renewal of ST Math. So that's why we kind of started to celebrate that. So um, these students read math stories and played math puzzles for a total of 118,000 minutes throughout the school year. So congratulations there. Um, I wanted to take a minute here since this is the last time I'll have an opportunity at this podium to talk about uh, the last eight years, and I really, really, really appreciate all the kind words um, that uh, all of you shared, and I've really enjoyed working with all of you and greatly appreciate your leadership and commitment to our district and our students. And, you know, people talk to me all the time, they say, thank you for your service, thank you for your service. And, yeah, uh, I don't ever think of it as service because I get paid. It's my job. You guys are truly serving. You get a nominal amount to attend board meetings and the amount of time and energy and effort you put into the success of our students um, is, is in incredible and, and couldn't be uh, more blessed to have a great board of education that truly um, does, a, does a, a good job working with, with our administration and our, our staff and all of our associations. So, um, you know, so as you all know, one of the things I'm most proud of is that I was the first person promoted from within the district to assume the role of superintendent. I believed at that time my knowledge of the district and our history and our culture had a great, had great clarity on where we needed to go as a district, and I'm infinitely proud of the time uh, as superintendent. Uh, so it really prompted me to want to kind of reflect about all that and have an opportunity to talk about all that our board and our leadership team have accomplished together. Um, in 2015-16, we came into um, a district, we took over a district that had a five-year forecast with a $45 million deficit in 2025, uh, or, or five years out from 2015-16 in fo uh, forecast to 20, year 2020, a $45 million deficit, which prompted the need for a levy. We also had significant um, overcrowding at our high schools. So with this in mind, we began pl planning for a combined levy that included 
included 6.9 mills of operations, one mill for permanent improvement, which was something new the district had never done but was greatly needed, and a no new millage bond issue to fund Berlin High School and other district improvements. We addressed, uh, we, we moved on and addressed overcrowding at our elementary schools and preschool locations by adding on to three of our elementary schools, thereby creating the capacity of a new building without adding additional unique operating costs of a new elementary school. We also moved our administrative offices out of Shanahan Middle School, created additional preschool classes at that location. This enabled us to stabilize the locations of our preschools and not continually move the classrooms to different buildings as K-5 enrollment grew. Uh, the lease space at the new Old Tangy Administrative Office improved our office and meeting space for all of our staff. The, follow the years following included the creation of a new strategic plan that has been the guiding document for planning and decision making throughout the district. We created a new brand identity for the district and all of our buildings, which has enhanced and improved our district image in the state and nation, while also creating a new rep revenue opportunities for the district and buildings. We adopted a digital conversion plan and a comprehensive te technology plan that included a reliable, redundant network with greatly improved access and network speed. We've added thousands of devices to our district to improve accessibility for all students. We created a leadership development program to cre uh, improve the leadership skills of all of our administrators as part of our talent management strategy. Um, the curriculum team <clears throat> created the portrait of a learner as a foundational piece for all of our curriculum improvements and staff professional development. We've st strategically built a staffing plan that is targeted at areas to better serve our students and staff. We've added 12 elementary assistant principals, six middle school principals, redesigned our special education and EL staffing, and added 21 math specialists to the district. Over the past eight years, we've created the Department of Student and Wellbeing that now includes a director, assistant director, supervisor, and 15 additional so social workers, bringing our total to 18 social workers in the district. We contracted with OSU Wexner Medical, Medical Center to staff our district with certified mental health counselors at all of our high schools and pushed existing mental health resources through Centero to our middle and elementary schools. We applied for OMAS certification through the State Mental Health Board to be a certified mental health counseling organization. We created a Director of Safety, Security, and Preparedness, have added additional school resource officers through our partnership with the Delaware County Sheriff's Office. The leadership of Director Swazi has been highly valued as we um, redesigned all of our buildings to include more secure entrances and improve safety protocols throughout the district. We created administrative positions to lead equity and inclusion team to better support the diversity liaisons and staff throughout the district and work toward our goal of creating a culture of inclusive excellence. As the district continued to grow, we began planning for our next levy that includes 6.9 mills for operations, an additional half mill for permanent improvement, and a no new millage bond issue to include Berlin Middle School, Shale Meadows Elementary School, Elementary 17, good for you Katie, huh? Um, our new principals here, new ADA compliant playgrounds, new elementary libraries, enhanced security entrances, broadcast journalism classrooms, redesigned collaboration space at Berlin, Olentangy and Orange High School, and additional district improvements. Um, and then the world shut down. So we did all that before the pandemic. While we all know that the event caused great unrest in the community, state, and nation, I am proud of how we supported our students, staff, families throughout the longest two plus years of our lives. I'm proud that we never canceled school. We never canceled a bus route. We never canceled an extracurricular event. We created a 5,000 student committed distance learning program. Thank you, Jen. Um, and we're able to continually feed our students regardless of where they attended school. While nothing was perfect, and it seemed like it would never end. Our student, staff, community pushed forward, and we managed to earn the highest designation possible on the most recent state report card. A few additional things that have happened over the last eight years that quite honestly may have gone un unnoticed include establishing OSD as a model district for meeting the needs with students with dyslexia, <coughs> becoming the only district in the world to earn Orton-Gillingham certification, developed a long-range technology plan, implemented a new comprehensive inventory system for technology, established technology help desk to process metrics for tracking speed and completion, digitized, digitized parent forms and processes, established process for monthly monitoring of elementary school classroom space to inform all of our facility planning, 
established essential academic vocabulary at all grade bands, created a three-tier system for supporting students with non-academic barriers to learning, completed a response to intervention action plan, and established district level and building specific multi-tiered systems of support teams and processes. Created a Grown Your Own Teacher program with the opportunity for full scholarships for minority students. Created the Hub Teacher Resources, a one-stop shop for all of our curriculum. Evaluated school start times repeatedly, we did that. Implemented Paper Cut, which saves us over one million pieces of paper each year. Established the Bridge Ed Corporate Community Strategic Partnership Initiative. We're expanding the Old Tangy Academy building to accommodate for the growth of the ACT and STEM programs. We advocated for increased commercial real estate development through partnerships with local government agencies that led to an increase in commercial real estate from 477 million to 596 million in valuation, which will, that's an increase of 24% in total commercial valuation. And while many of these properties are in TIF agreements, the future revenue that will be generated will have a significant impact on the district revenue when the TIF agreements expires. We have accomplished all of the above and now have a financial forecast that is far improved from 1516 to include a cash balance of $65 million in 2027. That's over a $100 million improvement. And that's due to our community supporting our district and believing in this board and our administration. It's also due to the continued advocacy for fair school funding by the board and the administration. At this writing, there's a potential for an additional $75 million to be added to fiscal year 27, giving us a balance of almost $150 million, which will be the equivalent of a $200 million change from 1516. So as I near the end of my tenure, I share all this with you with great pride. I am very thankful for having the opportunity that was given to me to lead the best district in the state and nation, and I'm more thankful for the support that I've received, uh, more than thankful uh, the uh, support I've received over the years from all of you. I know our district is positioned for continued success due to the great leadership of the board, a highly skilled administrative team, a talented staff and students, and to the continued support of our community. So um, it's been a great eight years, done a lot. Uh, and I think that for anybody who thinks that we ever think it's ever good enough, we just don't. And Mr. Meyer and the team and this team here is Mrs. Eddy, Ms. Eddy, and I ride off, thank you for, how about her? She had one more board meeting to come to. I said, why are you coming to the board meeting? She goes, I'm still the president. I'm still superintendent, but you're still the president. And we show up. <laughs> um, so we always know it's just never good enough and we're always fighting to improve. And uh, Mr. Meyer and, and the leadership team, Ms. Davis and, and Dr. Fetty and Mr. Wright, will continue to, and Mr. Jenkins, sorry, Mr. Jenkins, will continue to push forward. Um, so moving on, a couple action items of notes. We are approving the renewal of administrative contracts for the 23-24 school year. We've got a uh, couple uh, administrative employments. Dr. Branson is being moved to a new title of Assistant Director for Student Wellbeing. She was previously the supervisor. Uh, Hillary Demonstatis is gonna be one of our new social workers. Mrs. Katie Grijak is our new principal for elementary 17. She's gonna spend the first part of the year working at uh, Cheshire Elementary School with their large population. And then we'll shepherd most likely a large group of them over to elementary 17. Uh, Holly Hagen and Emily Likens are also new social workers. We have a, a transportation retirement, so we w wish Ralph Williams, our head mechanic, all the best in retirement. Mr. Wright's gonna come up here and talk about a district calendar update. Got some curriculum purchases, um, an easement for Delco Water, and we're replacing an operable wall at Liberty Middle School, which is a big purchase. So, uh, teacher work days tomorrow, Think Tank. The curriculum team has done another outstanding job. We'll start June 1st. Uh, you know, again, our teachers le are leaving. You know, last day with kids today, work day tomorrow, and we'll have, what do we have signed up, Vince? A couple hundred? 300 teachers will show up next Thursday at Liberty High for Think Tank, and you all be having a board meeting June 8th. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Ray. Nope. Thank all you. Right. All right, the next agenda item is the treasurer's report. Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. I have a few items tonight. Um, in honor of Mr. Rafe, I made a, a longer presentation. I thought he would like that. 
Um, the first thing I want to cover is where we are with House Bill 33, which is the, uh, the biennium budget. Um, right now, the House has put forth its amendments that are being uh, deliberated on uh, by the Senate, and I don't have the clicker, so if someone wants to move us forward, perfect. Um, I'll grab it. So the House version of the bill is in the Senate. Um, it is a very positive development for the district. Uh, ultimately, the formula's inputs uh, have rolled forward four years, which is uh, dramatic. To keep them as fiscal year 18 by the end of this biennium, uh, you would be talking data that's seven years old. So that's uh, dramatically improved. That will also, if we transition, uh, if you don't just keep it at the fiscal year 22 statewide average base cost and you go to the 24, that's anticipated to be about a 12% increase. All of that may seem uh, cryptic, but all of that means more state funding uh, for Olentangy schools, uh, which is a huge development. So ultimately, the next slide shows uh, where uh, the bill is in the process. If you ever go to the Ohio uh, 135th legislature, they have a nice little bill tracker. And right now, uh, the Senate Finance Committee is still having hearings. Um, all the way through Wednesday, May 31st. Once that's done, it'll take about a week and we anticipate the Senate to pass uh, or introduce its uh, substitute bill. Uh, ultimately, they'll then uh, all get together and throw their omnibus amendments on top of it uh, by June the 9th. Uh, I've always said the word omnibus and known generally what it meant, but today I looked it up to know for sure, and it means what it sounds like, the kitchen sink. Uh, quite literally throw all kinds of amendments on top of it. Assuming it gets voted out of Finance Committee on June the 15th, um, and assuming it will be different, it will be. Uh, then the House and the Senate will convene what are simply called um, uh, conference committees that work to uh, ameliorate the differences between the two bills and to try to figure out how to reach compromise. So there's where we're headed. Um, I don't want to get overly giddy and excited, but right now any information that I'm getting even from our, our senators is that it's full steam ahead with 22. Um, I know that there has been some conversation that the Senate might cool it off a bit and drop the cost sets back to 20. Either one is going to be far better uh, than 18. The other thing, oh, before I go, board members, any questions about the um, progress of the budget bill? Uh, no, I appreciate the update. Okay. okay. The next one that I want to talk about, and I'm going to do this over the course of the next four or five uh, board meetings. Ultimately, um, there's a lot of buzz going on right now about what's going to happen with values in Delaware County. Uh, uh, Franklin County's in the same boat. And many people are expecting, and I would say rightly so, that existing home values may increase by as much as 25 to 30 percent. So the natural inclination is to think that if values go up 25 to 30 percent, taxes will go up 25 to 30 percent. So when I was a math teacher, I always liked to put the goals on the board that I would tell the, the students, when this lesson is over, you should be able to check off these three items and know this is what you learned. So I'm going to start with the end in mind. And the question I want to immediately answer, when property uh, values increase, taxes do not increase commensurately. So my journey when all of these um, discussions are done is for everyone to go, oh, now I get it. The way I'm going to show that with begin with the end in mind is a hypothetical scenario of three homes in Olentangy schools. And I'm quite literally going to take home A, B, and C. I'm going to take home A, which is at the 22 valuation, uh, $250,000, and I'm going to increase it by 15% and say that it's 287.5 when we value it in 2023, when I say we, the county auditor. Home B is going to be 450000 and it's going to undergo a 20% increase, which will change its value to 540000 
And finally, Home C is going to be uh, the most rapidly increasing home of all, and it's going to go from 650,000 to 845,000. Overall, we're going to pretend or hypothesize that the district itself has a 25%. Now, what do I mean by overall? If you take a look at the footprint, that is Olentangy Schools and all of the different neighborhoods and jurisdictions within it. On average, that entire footprint, its real estate value increased 25%. When we're done with all of these lessons, it's going to make sense why. The uh, taxes charged for the Olentangy schools on Home A will actually drop by 3%. The taxes on Home B, which went up by 20%, will go up nominally by about 1.17%. And then the home that grew really, really fast, but still compared to the district average, 30% versus 25%, would see uh, just under a 10% increase. But that hopefully sets the tone for most people think my home goes up 30%, my taxes are gonna go up 30%, and that is absolutely not the case. So the next question is, why does the auditor even do this? You know, what, what's the purpose for evaluating properties? Well, the Ohio Revised Code says that the state tax commissioner and our county auditor is in charge of making sure that it happens, is evaluated every three years. And you have a three-year cycle of a, what's called a triennial update, and then three years later, what's called a complete reappraisal. So the reappraisals are six years apart, the triennial updates are three years apart, but they roll in three-year cycles. That'll make sense on the next slide. The goal of that is not to increase values so taxes are increased. The goal of that is to be absolutely sure that the values of real property are equally or properly assessed. The easiest way to compare real estate property is it's a pie, and it's not possible to cut your slice of pie without impacting every other slice of pie. So ultimately, if you've got a property that increases tremendously, you wouldn't want to know that at the end of the day that the taxes paid by that property are not in some way shape or form increasing in such a way that the burden isn't being carried by the rest of the properties in the district. That's the true goal of reevaluation and reappraisal is to take a look at how the pie is sliced and re-slice it if needed. So we're on a cycle in Delaware County about a third of the counties go every year. We're on a cycle where in 2014, there was what's called a triennial update. In 17, it was a complete reappraisal. Update, here we are in 2023, that's a complete reappraisal. It is a little more comprehensive than a triennial update. A triennial update, they would do this by looking at a computer, punching a few buttons, studying some data, uh, and making the decision by not really physically and actively going out. In a reappraisal, the auditor will most likely hire a firm or firms and they will physically walk neighborhoods and they will come out and they will look at properties and they'll make a determination about what the value is and then you can see the cycles in subsequent years. So what is it exactly that they're trying to do? They're ultimately trying uh, when they come out to take a look at how many sales and what exactly is um, the number, the median sales price, and then the median ratio of the county auditor's market value to sales price. So they'll take a look at all this data and they're gonna boil it down to a couple different statistics, but ultimately here's what they're looking for. So how many total valid sales were there? And a valid sale is defined as an arm's length transaction. It would not include a sale from a father to a son because that's probably not going to be a market uh, transaction. Uh, maybe with my dad because he would try to gouge me for all he's worth. Uh, but in general, you try to treat your kids right. Uh, ultimately, uh, it's no sales where only a portion of the parcel is sold or a distressed sale. So a foreclosure would not be a market transaction. That doesn't, it's not indicative of what happens. Well, across all of our political subdivisions, Delaware Township, Liberty Township, all the way down to Powell Village, we have had plenty of valid sales. 
you're normally looking for statistically, mathematically, a sample size of, uh, on average, of 30 to 50 or greater. So we're well within that in 22, 21, and 20. So this gives you an idea of how many sales. The next data set is really what drives what the auditor is trying to do. Yes, sir. So in included in a valid sale isn't just an existing home, but it would be the purchase of a new home as well, correct? The initial sale? All of this is a reevaluation and a reassessment of existing, existing property. Okay. Brand new property will be picked up and there will be an assessment made as to what it's worth, but it would not undergo this kind of analysis. That's correct. So this is what, what we would call the, the slide that really drives what the auditor is looking at. Whoops, my fault. In, for example, let's pick Liberty Township. In 2020, if you were to find the median price of what the auditor has valued for homes in Liberty Township, and you were to make a ratio to what they actually sold for, you would find that the median value that the auditor put on the home is only 90% of the median price that it sold for. It went down in 2021, and it went down again in the most recent tax year, and that should say 2022, I missed 2022, to 69.46%. Again, what does that mean? That means in Liberty Township in 2022, if you computed the median value of the home that the auditor put for taxing purposes, and you were to compare it to the median value of the home and the price it sold at, the auditor's value is only 70% of what the home sold for. What the auditor shoots for, quite honestly, is that the above data suggests that there may need to be as much as a 25 to 30 percent increase because the auditor is shooting for that ratio to be 92 to 94 percent. And here's the logic behind that. One might think, well, why wouldn't you want that to be 100 percent? Why wouldn't you want the median value that the auditor puts on a home to be exactly equal to the sales price median of a home? Well, for the math teachers in here, and I'm looking at Mrs. Shape because she's going to know this, what is median? Median is the middle value. So if you go 100%, fully one half the homes in your community are overvalued. And so that's why they back it down to 92 to 94%. But it seems complicated, but quite literally, there is a very direct relationship to in Berlin Township, for example, you have a ratio of about 70%. When you get to your reappraisal year, the auditor is going to shoot for getting it up to 92 to 94, and so that delta is about 20 to 25%. That's pretty well how the auditor does it. Um, it's not a rocket science formula. There are other nuances. If Mr. Kites was here, I wouldn't want to offend him. Uh, but there's some other things that he does, but th that really drives what happens. So that begs the obvious question. So I, my tax bills are going to go up by 25 to 30 percent, and the flat answer is no. That's not true. They will not go up by 25 to 30 percent. Remember the reappraisal aims to make sure values are correct. The goal is not to increase taxes. Rather, it's to equalize the tax burden. We're going to learn how, as the value of real property increases, the voted millage decreases. And that's how taxes are equalized and they don't just go up like wild. So at the next board meeting on June the 8th, we're going to see how that works. Finally, future treasurer's reports. We're going to answer these questions. What is a mill? And what's the taxable value of a home? How are millage rates reduced so that taxes do not increase commensurately? Are some millage rates left unchanged? And finally, when values in the community increase substantially, doesn't the school get a windfall of new tax revenue? Hint, no. Questions from the board? Uh, probably not more, uh, more of a comment than a question. So one, 
I think this um, communication slash education is um, incredibly important, uh, and I appreciate you taking the time um, to kind of walk us through it. And um, you know, we're going to have to do this a few times for it to get absorbed fully. Uh, but I think it's it's critically important because the more people understand, um, when th then when things actually happen, they won't be surprised. So I think um, this is great work. So thank you. Thank you. Question about how inflation would factor into the growth of the tax rates, and I'm not trying to get lost in the weeds here, but let's go. Okay. Um, last two years, inflation spikes. So how would that in impact your hypothetical scenarios with home B if their change goes up a percent if you factored in do these factor in inflation only I know the values prop would only in as much no inflation really has nothing to do the CPIU a basket of goods it can be called inflation in that the demand for homes is driving prices up and where you see that metric is the auditor has a particular value and maybe they say for tax purposes your home is worth 400,000 but you have a valid sale six months ago and you sold it for 600 grand so that is how um, inflation impacts it it's just the prices of the homes are driven up by demand and the auditors value hasn't kept up and that's why they reassess so in, in scenario C, mm -hmm. um, change is 9.6%, 22 to 23. If inflation is 12% in that time, is that still lower? The, if you're saying in general the CPIU inflation. Right, the value of a dollar. It has nothing to do with what you see there. It's strictly driven by how much the value of the home increased. Now, where inflation comes into play, is someone might say, well, my tax bill just went up 9% and my dollar bill isn't worth as much and so it's going to pinch me harder. But the two are not directly related to each other. No. You got my question. Good. Yep. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. It was very good. I have a couple action items. Okay. Um, we just have donations. Uh, thank you to uh, the Orange um, Performing Arts patrons for uh, providing the uh, band tower. And thanks again to the Liberty Athletic Boosters uh, for making a donation that we're going to turn around and use for a coaching position. We'll approve minutes from May 2, 3, 9, 11, and 15. Um, the master agreement between the uh, Athletic Booster Club here at Orange and the Board of Education. And finally, uh, revised permanent appropriations. Now I'm done. No, you're good. All right. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on to public participation. First speaker, Danielle Hyden, to speak about listening and disciplining when applicable. Our district is going through multiple lawsuits, which can't be easy as we transition to our new superintendent. To our new superintendent, Mr. Meyer, you have a lot of work to do to build trust within our community to hold your employees accountable for their actions in accordance to board policies and contracts, to protect freedom of speech, listening to those who present facts which may be unfavorable to Olentangy, and protecting those brave individuals who come forward, whether students, parents, teachers, or administrators, and protecting them from all harassment. The board docs are there, but we need individuals who will adhere to board policies. I know, I was once a whistleblower and was let go via text because I spoke out regarding a special needs elementary teacher now found on ODE's disciplinary search and no longer within Olentangy. I've spoken at past board meetings asking the board many a times to require in writing that the board complete a written annual evaluation of the superintendent and reflect that change in policy 1240, which states, the board reserves the right to modify annually the superintendent evaluation tool. I say this because the board in 2019 were given facts, the principal didn't complete multiple teacher evaluations which are required, and the board chose to not acknowledge that information in a written evaluation of our superintendent. Even though policy states 
the superintendent will ensure all aspects of district operation comply with state laws. So, to, sorry. If the board members cannot honestly, without bias, complete a written annual evaluation of our superintendent, then they have no regard to the 22,000 plus students or their parents or guardians. I wish Mr. Meyer luck as you embark on your new position, and I would hope you never lose sight of your moral compass. Thank you. Can I provide a clarifying comment? Yes, you may. I'd have been disappointed had she not shown up for the 10th time to give the same speech on my last meeting as superintendent for an issue that was over 10 years ago. Thank you, Mr. Reid. No. Nope. You cannot. You're out of order. Next speaker, please. Julie Fiesel, speaking about Zolantangi. Or Zulantangi. Yeah, Zulantangi. Yes. Hi, I'm here tonight to talk about the Olentangy Education Foundation and its annual fundraiser, Zoo Olentangy. This year's event will be held on Friday, August the 11th at the Zoo, and the theme is the art of education. We are working with the district art teachers to bring that theme throughout the evening. We have a lot of fun activities planned, and I'm here tonight to ask the board members to join me and my husband, John, in being sponsors of this event. We need all the help that we can get to get um, tickets sold and sponsors secured so that we can raise money that goes directly toward the teacher grants that we award. The teacher grants that we go through, and we just finished up the latest round, directly impact the students of this district. Think of us like your district-wide PTO. And so the more money that we raise, the more money we can put back into the classroom. So again, I'd like to remind you all to come to our event on August the 11th, consider being a sponsor, and spread the word. But before I step away, I would like to say that after having served on this board, as Mr. Rafe made his way up the leadership ladder in this district, I can honestly say that on behalf of my family and the students and staff that he has served, the dis this district is a better place because of Mark and Katie Rafe. I'm glad you included Katie. <laughs> and I've already got my tickets, so. I'll be there. Okay, we now have uh, one, two discussion items. So the first being the district calendar. Mr. Wright. Mr. Jenkins, you have to advance the slides now. Thank you, sir. Uh, be very brief. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, letting me come back to share. Uh, some information after we've continued to study this and talk with some of our sister districts and continue to study what the state might or might not be doing about the total eclipse which will occur on Monday, April 8th in 2024. Because of that and several conversations with our partners in Delaware County Emergency Services, they have requested as part of their ability to serve what will need to be done that day in this county is that we not also have schools uh, in attendance. So uh, as we looked at options, we found that our one and only uh, easiest option was to take our in lieu of day that was scheduled for the last Friday in April the 26th and move that to the eclipse day and on Monday, April 8th. So we are presenting tonight for your approval um, a, a change that is the only change in that calendar that you guys approved uh, 11 months ago. So, any questions on that? Questions for Mr. Wright? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, you're taking this one? The, yep. uh, we're going to have a discussion on the self-insurance fund, or health insurance fund, a premium holiday recommendation. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. O'Brien. First of all, I want to say uh, very much appreciative uh, Kevin and Sue and Mark and Allison and Elaine are here. Um, I want to uh, thank Rob Comstock. I know he's not able to be here tonight, uh, but we would have worked as a committee um, since, when was our first meeting? March? Uh, I want to say it was March. And one of the first things that we started to dig into 
uh, as a group, and we included our finance and audit committee, was what, what is a reasonable um, reserve policy to have for our self-insured uh, loss fund? Uh, at the end of the day, we try to strike a balance between not being a bank because we ultimately want to use the right amount of money uh, for a robust health insurance plan for our employees, not too much and certainly not too little. So we worked to create a policy, 6210.02. It would have been vetted by our finance and audit committee in both February and April, and the policy was recommended to this board uh, first and second reads on April 13th and 25th, and then formal approval at May 9th. This policy is a really good step and a systematic way to analyze our self-insured loss fund. Uh, again, to be absolutely sure that we're spending the right amount of money because each dollar that we do donate or uh, dedicate to the loss fund is one less dollar in theory that can be spent uh, on things that directly impact students. Certainly, we want all of our employees to have a good health care plan, uh, but that is a more indirect uh, type of effect. And so we're trying to be sure that we don't put too much money in the loss fund because once it's there, it can't come out. Where does it come from? It comes from the general fund. Ultimately, when the board pays its share of premiums, we are cutting the expenses from the general fund and then depositing it into that loss fund. So what the policy takes a look at is what's called our IBNR, which is our incurred uh, but not reported. Sometimes it's called an IBNP, uh, incurred but not paid. We always have to be sure, per Ohio Revised Code, that we have enough set aside for any claims that are in the pipeline that we don't know about. Um, someone goes to the doctor, obviously it's not instantaneous that we have that bill presented to us to pay, um, so we always have to be sure that we have those reserves. We want to balance for uh, reserves and claims fluctuations, any interest earnings, uh, which cover administrative expenses, mitigate inflation, and fund wellness programs. Ultimately, we are shooting for a target of making sure that we have funding reserves at what we call the intermediate level uh, of 30% uh, or 110 days of reserves. And that's defined by targeted reserves divided by total annual cost. We want to be about 30%. Uh, ultimately, um, should we exceed 35%, then we have about 128 to 138 days or 130 days of cash. And the policy states that after study, after uh, review, that the insurance committee uh, can make a recommendation to the board of not less than uh, one half of a month, but not more than one month of premium holiday. If the assets fall below 25%, then that obviously is a really good sign uh, that ultimately we're going to have to increase uh, funding levels, even though funding levels are part of the analysis, uh, the increase each year because of claims. So our guardrails are basically between 35 and 25, between about 130 days reserve and 90 days of reserves. If you look at where we are right now, um, this is a high level projection that shows what we feel like uh, our funding will be. Notice that there are medical trends built into the model. So we are anticipating right now potentially increases of seven and a quarter, uh, 6.875, 6.75, 6.75. And so our funding levels are noted. We then have projected our uh, beginning of year assets, our gain or loss when you take a look at ultimately what we think uh, our funded claims are going to be, uh, which are somewhere on there they should be, unless I snipped them out accidentally. Uh, ultimately, our assets at the end of the year, because uh, it looks like maybe I cut those out, and sure didn't mean to. Uh, the assets at the end of the year are this line. And if you take those assets and you compare them to the claims, we would have 55.4% right now, and that is with a projected $3.7 million um, premium holiday that is plugged in. Ultimately, if you track uh, throughout the five years, uh, we still don't get below 30% uh, with all of these uh, factors that analyze in. So this particular chart is why, uh, as an insurance committee, we would like to have a discussion with the board about why we feel we have adequate reserves right now. 
uh, enough adequate reserves to make the following uh, recommendation. Um, whoops, I'm going to go out of order and do this first. So our recommendation would be that the members of the Olentangy Schools uh, Insurance Committee formally would like to recommend a premium holiday for the month of November 2023. All employees who are enrolled as a snapshot date of October 1, 2023 would have a premium holiday in November of 2023. So how do we get here? Ultimately, uh, we're trying to shift to consumer-driven health care, and that's a high deductible health plan. We have over 50% of our staff now on the high deductible health plan. Wellness and other programs to encourage healthy outcomes. Surely within the last couple of years, now this isn't just a blip of a phenomenon, we do have some residual health care delay and avoidance from COVID. What would this look like and what would this mean? Well, for the district, it means about a $3.03 million savings in the 23-24 school year. For our employees, if you're on the high deductible health plan and you're uh, on single coverage, it'll be about $80 in savings for the month. A family plan would save about $430. On the PPO, you're going to save on a single about $200 and on the family about $535. So ultimately that is our recommendation and we're here to answer any questions or clarify anything about that recommendation. Anything from the board? No. Okay. So that was our second discussion. Now we go right into the board action items. <coughs> um, so I'll now entertain a motion to approve board action items A uh, through E, please. Can I have a motion for A through E? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion on A through E? All right, seeing none, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Mr. Dabrico? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Okay, can I now have a motion to approve board action item F? Can I have a motion, please? Yeah, so moved. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Any discussion on board action item F? All right, seeing none, please call the roll. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? No. Dr. Darico. Yes. All right, Mr. Jenkins, would you please present the treasurer action items? As noted before, uh, items A through D, donations, minutes, um, master agreement with the boosters here at Orange, and the appropriations. Okay. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the treasurer action items? All right, seeing none, please call the roll. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Rafe, will you please present the superintendent action items? Yes, sir. I'd like to recommend approval of superintendent action items A through H, please. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the superintendent action items? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Okay, I'll now entertain a motion to, to go into an exe uh, sorry, executive session as permitted by the Ohio Revised Code for the purpose of conferences with attorneys concerning pending or an imminent court item, action item. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. We have a motion and a second. We will um, only return to adjourn. We will not be taking action when we return. So with that, uh, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Uh, we're going to band room.
9 15 p.m i'll entertain a motion to adjourn please so moved second a, a motion and a second <coughs> excuse me any uh, discussion on the motion to adjourn seeing none please call the roll mr jenkins give me just a second Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned. Thanks, guys. Congratulations.